Now we can see all kind of functions an encoder can do for us. We select input gain and now we can adjust the DJ's mic level. The moment I attach this function to this encoder, it will always adjust the DJ mic gain. On the other hand, if I select module 1 and select source gain level, I will always adjust gain of all sources selected for this module. This is a more logical solution for a module function. Now gain adjust is always for a source connected to this module. Normally we have the encoder programmed as a control function. So with these settings like this module, one control, it means that the functionality of the encoder is dependent upon the control. And the control we program with CRM. So we see here that all functions of the display, encoder and encoder switch, are dependent upon settings of the control parameter. But we can also give them a dedicated function. If we look further down, we see familiar switch functions like module 2 source start. This switch is very clearly and dedicated selected for module and source start. So a start function is generated on the source that is activated on this module. Here we see a couple of LEDs on this module that we can give various functions. In this case the LEDs show when the AUX buses are active. We can also show dynamics active, any Q, signal present and peak. Let's have a look where the LEDs are positioned. These LEDs now show auxiliary, dynamics, EQ, signal and peak, but could also indicate alternative functions. On the bottom of the web page we can program the color of the switches. The big switches can show you three colors. They have two internal LEDs, green and red. Green and red together makes orange. In this case, the on color is set to 1, which is green and is activated. Two is red. The off color is zero and is activated for most switches. It means when a switch is off, no color will be showed. An alternative could be to make a non-active switch shows green and an active switch lights red. This is a dedicated function of the switch. We can also have the color changed by a module function. In this example, I will change the off color of the last switches by means of a module function and I use this function in module 1, source alert. If the source alert source on the module generates an alert, the color will change from 0 to 1. So the switch will light in its off state. In this way, alert will give an indication on this switch. On the in and outputs, we can assign an alert function to a specific card function. In this example, we will assign in the hybrid card the ring detect to the source alert. So when a hybrid is activated on this module, the alert will be generated and a LED will light when a ring detect takes place. So we can program all LEDs, display and switches on the module. If we do not assign a function to a switch, nothing will happen when this switch is pushed. To the right we see a column called local. In this column we make labels we use to display the function of the switches in the software application. 
The default labels are shown in the default column. For instance, default label bus12 on has a local label called PROG, short for program. It means that if the software is loaded, the text PROG or SUB will be shown in the display. In this way it's clear what function is assigned to this switch. On the right side of the web page we see user level. The user level is used to program a specific switch, encoder, potentiometer or fader and might be used in a specific mode. We have six user modes we have called idle, unknown, operator 1, operator 2, supervisor 1 and supervisor 2. Idle means that no one is locked on to the mixer and no chip card is present. Unknown means somebody is locked on with a chip card or by typing his or her name and the software does not recognize the user. Operator 1, 2 and supervisor 1 and 2 are known users allowed to carry out instructions. The known users are divided in three groups, operator 1, 2 and supervisor 1 and 2. Then there's a fifth level, which is the administrator that can carry out all the possibilities in the system. And this user is not known, not shown on this list, sorry. In another section of the software, all users functions that are allowed are not allowed under control of idle, unknown, operator 1, 2 and supervisor 1 and 2 are programmed there. But we can override these locally. Imagine the dump function is not allowed for the idle user and unknown user, but it is for the operator 1, 2 and supervisor 1 and 2. We put the label here to no for idle and unknown. Now the function is overwritten for this module only. Normally you also do that for the other four dump switches in this four fader section. So this is done locally. But the next fader panel, this has not been done yet. To avoid a lot of programming locally, we can do that also globally in the database, where we can switch off all dump functionality. If I click it to yes, the label is blue. It means that this function is locally activated. If I click again the label yes, will be grayed out and will now follow the global settings of the system. In this case, all is yes. So everything might be used in this mixer. We do not have security settings for the LEDs. These are showing always what is happening. We only have security settings for functions that are controlled from the control surface. On this screen we program the functionality of a LED, encoder, fader and display. And these functions are grouped. We have module functions for all that is related to the module, bus functions for that is related to the buses, monitor functions mainly used to control room monitor matters, there are console functions but also source functions that only affects a dedicated source, and destination functions that are only active on dedicated destinations. If no function is assigned, a switch encoder LED or display will not function. This includes all nets near the fader. On the right side we have the user levels where we program who is allowed to do what in this module. This module knows after programming to which user level it is assigned and you can see this in the page service configuration. We were busy with UE4 fader 1 to 4 that is now part of console 1. So dependent upon which user level is locked on to the console 1, if console 1 is locked on as a user 1. Let's have a look. If he is operator 1, then this function will be allowed. So it is important that if you use security levels, 
that these set levels are programmed for that specific console you are working with. In this case, all is about console 1. So all should be set to console 1. 